Howdy everybody. Welcome back to another week of accounting and we are continuing on the adjusting entries train and we're in chapter eight in solid footing. In our video right now, we're going to take a few minutes. We're going to talk about a concept called unearned revenue. Sounds complicated, but uh, comparatively speaking, the, the other things we've learned in accounting, really not too bad. Pretty straightforward topic here. So we'll jump right into it. We had a video last week where we went through the idea of adjusting entries. We talked about what they are, and we gave you three examples. We talked about depreciating a long-term asset. We talked about making that adjustment for supplies, and we talked about making accrual entries. And we had an example where we accrued wages and where we had people that work for us, but we didn't pay them until the following month, and we had to make an accrual entry for that. So that's where we were in chapter seven with Lenny's lawn care. We're continuing on with Lenny. And just to take a step back and review a little bit of that material that we talked about in chapter seven, if you want to kind of have some fun and pause the video and see if you can fill in these blanks on your own, you could do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and run through them real quick. Journal entries we make at the end of the accounting period are the adjusting entries. Now that end of the period, it could be a month like we're doing in solid footing. Or it could be a quarter. We could make adjusting entries at the end of the quarter. Or we could make them as part of the year-end closing process. So, you know, just whatever period we're using. We make the adjusting entries always at the end of the period. Every adjusting entry that we do, you remember it always involves two things? You remember what those two accounts were? It always involves a balance sheet account. I gave you the first one. Can you get the second one? Pat yourself on the back if you set an income statement account. Every journal entry involves a balance sheet account and an income statement account. And again, we do these to kind of clean up the accounting records at the end of the period. Okay, we do it to reflect things that have happened but aren't reflected in the accounting records. You know, these aren't your regular normal transactions, you know, day to day, people coming in buying something. Uh, you going out and buying inventory. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about things at the end of the period to clean up those accounting records. So here we are. We're in April with Lenny's Lawn Care. We're getting into the busy season here with the lawn care people. Uh, and you can see we got our general ledger up here. All these accounts are looking pretty familiar, but we have one new one for April right there. Unearned revenue. So just looking at that and the location, you can already kind of see, yeah, we got a liability going on here. So what in the world is unearned revenue? Here's our example from solid fitting that we're going to work through. On April 1, Lenny signs a contract to perform lawn services for a new customer. The new customer is a university in the Tampa area. The contract Lenny signs stipulates that Lenny will be paid an $8,000 monthly fee. All right. As part of that contract agreement, the university agrees to pay the first four months of service in advance. Thus, Lenny gets $32,000 in cash from the university on April 1. Lenny's living the dream because Lenny got paid up front. Lenny's going to do four months of work and they paid for it all at one time. Wow, what a good deal for Lenny. And this happens all the time in business. You've probably been a party to this kind of transaction, even if you didn't realize it. Think of every time you ever bought a ticket for a sporting event or a concert months in advance, or maybe you have an annual pass to Kings Island that you paid for back in the winter so you could use it in the summer, or maybe you just bought a gift card or gave someone a gift card. In all of these circumstances, you have given your money to a business and they haven't given you anything in return at the time of purchase. Okay, they're going to give you that later on. That creates a liability for the business that we call unearned revenue. Sometimes you also see it called deferred revenue. So the business can't count that revenue until they earn it, until they play the game and let you in the stands, until they open the theme park, until they give you that cup of coffee. Then they can count the revenue. But from an accounting standpoint, we have to do something when they take that cash because we can't just take cash and not do anything for the accounting, right? So that's what we're dealing with here, unearned revenue. Advanced payment, where the business collects the customer's money, 
but they haven't given them anything yet. That creates a liability for the business. And think about all the stuff that happened with COVID. You might have had tickets for the Reds game. What happened when the Reds didn't play those games? They had to give you that money back. You may have had that annual pass to Kings Island. COVID comes along. They don't open for three quarters of the season. Are you just stuck? No. They gave you a free pass for the following year. They're applying that pass for 2020 to 2021. That's how they're satisfying those liabilities. They give you your money back or they do some other thing to compensate you. That's what happens when they can't deliver the product or service that they promised. So again, this is called unearned revenue. You may also see it called deferred revenue in some accounting books. We're going to call it unearned revenue. Right on. Everybody kind of understand what we're dealing with here? So let's do the accounting for transaction number one here. On April 1, Lenny took $32,000 up front from the university in Tampa. So obviously we've got money coming in the door. We have to do something. We just can't take a check for $32,000 and say, yeah, we'll record it four months later. And then we got to record it now. 32000 And here comes that new account, unearned revenue. We took a customer's money. We haven't done anything for them yet. We're going to. We're going to do something for them. We're going to play that game in July. We're going to open a theme park up in May. We're going to mow their grass in June. Whatever the case might be. We're going to do it eventually. After we do it, we can count the revenue. So 32000 in unearned revenue. That's a liability. We're liable to that customer. I'm going to put in record upfront payment as a description. There we go. We made that transaction. What else we got going on in April here? Got to post it. And again, y'all remember, we post our journal entries. They come over exactly like we wrote them out. And there's no shame if you still need to do things like this. Okay, assets go up on the debit side. Liabilities go up on the credit side. If you need to do those types of things, that's fine. Whatever it takes for you and your notes and to get all this straight. If you need to do that until you had it memorized, hey, I'm right there with you. So, one word of caution here on the unearned revenue. And I put it in red, so you know it's important. You know it's a big warning here. Warning, the arms are going off. Even though we have revenue in the title of the account, unearned revenue, even though we have revenue in the title, it's a liability account. We haven't earned it, okay? So don't mess up on your income statements and balance sheets by leaving that off or putting it somewhere where it doesn't go. Unearned revenue, liability, it goes on the balance sheet. All right. So, other transactions. You remember at the end of the month of March, we made that accrued entry to accrue wages. We had a wages expense debit, credit to wages payable. Now we're in the following month, it's time to pay that off. We're going to pay off the 1825 that we owe the employees. It's payday. So on April 3rd, the employees are paid what they owe. And I bet you could do this. When we saw this in the Chapter 7 homework, y'all did a good job with that. So we're going to go wages payable. That will get rid of that liability and wipe it out to the tune of eighteen twenty-five. And of course, our credit is to the cash account. Employees don't like to be paid with hugs and... Taco Bell gift cards. They want money. I would work for a Taco Bell gift card. That's just me, though. And you can want to, uh, put a description there if you want to. Paid accrued wages. Because that was from the prior month. All right. So there's our posting of that entry. You got your debit right there. And again, Wages payable go up on the credit side. They go down on the debit. Notice, I started with a positive balance. I subtracted out. Now I've got zero in that account. Paid it off. On the cash side, cash goes up on the debit side. It goes down on the credit. And there's my 1825 coming out. 
So we're continuing on. Other transactions that happened in April, I'm not gonna walk through every one of them. We've done these quite a bit. There's the one we booked right at the beginning, four month advance payment. We just paid the wages payable off. We have that truck expense we have every month. We collected on an account receivable that a customer owed us. We did mowing, billed the customer, and we paid wages. You all are pros at all that at this point. So we get to the end of the month, and now it's time to do the other adjusting entries. We can't just not do them because we learned about them in Chapter 7. It's not like we do them in Chapter 7 and forget about them forever. We keep doing them. That's the way accounting works. Uh, if you hey, we're in February hey, at the time of the recording this video, uh, so maybe you saw Groundhog Day. You know, the old classic movie with Bill Murray where he wakes up and he's reliving Groundhog Day every day. If you want a career that's basically like Groundhog Day, you need to be an accountant. Uh, and that's basically going to be your life because, you know, the journal entries, you do the adjusting entries every month, you do the closing process every month, and on and on and on. From day one until you're retired. It's like Groundhog Day. It's great. You can even learn to play the piano along the way like Bill Murray did or maybe ice sculpting. Anyway, we got the depreciation entry. We got supplies expense where we have to adjust for the amount we used up in supplies. And then we got the mysterious unearned rent entry revenue where we earn that revenue for one month after doing the mowing. So if you remember back, we're depreciating that equipment a thousand bucks a month. So at the end of the month, y'all remember that entry to depreciate equipment? We have that expense account. And we've been doing $1,000 a month in our example. And then we got the accumulated depreciation. All right, like that. So we'll make that entry to record April depreciation on the equipment. And there it is right there. We post it over. And then we hit the expense account. And remember, gang, these expense accounts, whenever we record an expense, expenses are debits, okay? When we record them, always. Every time we, we record an expense, it's going to be a debit. The only time you'll ever see anything in the credit column of an expense account is if we're closing it or if we boogered something up and we got to fix it, okay? So expenses are debits. And you might look at that and say, wait a second, what about that cost of goods sold? We don't have cost of goods sold, something's missing. Remember, we don't have inventory here. We're a lawn care company, we're not selling any inventory. So you won't see inventory over here, and you won't see cost of goods sold over there, all right? April supplies adjusting entry. We got to adjust supplies for what we've used up. Lenny determined that 7,600 of supplies remain in stock at the end of April. Well, that's a problem because our balance in supplies, if we go back and look, is 9,000, right? So now we only have 7,600. What are we going to do? Balance should be 7,600. We're at 9,000. This is my T account. We gotta make an adjusting entry. Holy smokes, look at that crooked line. It's weird, I can go left to right really straight. Up and down, not so much. I don't know why. We gotta go from 9,000 to 7,600, which means we have to make an adjusting entry for the difference of 1,400. 9,000 minus 7,600, 1,400. So that's the amount that I need to adjust. And I'm going to adjust it by counting that 1400 as an expense. Expense of me using up the supplies during the month. And then I'll credit that supplies asset account. On some of your all's homework, I've really been harping about make sure you label the account completely because some of y'all just wanna put like wages or rent and just leave it that. Well, it could be wages expense, it could be wages payable, it could be wages, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Like rent payable, rent receivable, uh, rent revenue. So we have to make sure we're labeling things completely. And this is a good example. Supplies expense and supplies are two different things. If you just put supplies with no thought to what account you're using, you could get it wrong. Supplies expense, supplies. There we go. That adjusts our supplies down. 
records our expense of what we used up during the month. Now, final one, we need to adjust that unearned revenue that we booked at the beginning of April because we've used up, not excuse me, used up, we've earned the revenue for one month. We've earned 8,000 of revenue. Remember, the contract said we were going to get paid 8,000 a month. So basically, we took all that money up front and we're going to earn it 8,000 bucks at a time. So the adjusting entry is to record the revenue as we earn it. We got all the money, if we look at the timeline, we got all the money right here. We got 32,000 right there, right on. We're going to earn it one month at a time, which means by April 30th, we'll have earned 8,000. By May 31st, we'll have earned another 8,000. June 30th, we'll have earned another 8,000. And July 31st, we'll have earned the last 8,000 for a total of 32,000. So at the end of every one of these months right here, we have to record earning $8,000. We're just going to go and get rid of 8,000 of the liability by debiting unearned revenue. See, it's got a $32,000 credit balance. I get rid of the liability, I have to debit the liability. And then I'm gonna count the revenue. I can't count revenue until I earn it. I earn it by doing the work or delivering the product. All right, just like that. So you put all of that together, all these April entries put together, and you can see them listed out right there. Here's my ending general ledger. You can see my ending balances right there. I'm gonna take those ending balances and we're going to make our trial balance and our financial statement. Actually, I don't see a trial balance on there. Let's just make the financial statements in. All right, we'll skip the trial balance part. I didn't go to rehearsal today, I'm sorry. Uh, here's our ledger accounts right there. Take your ending balances, plug them into the financial statements. I'll pause for a moment and give everybody a chance to do that and then we'll check our numbers together. So there we go. I've got all the numbers on the ledger moved over to the financial statements. And again, you're going to want to do your income statement first. You've got to do your income statement to get that net income number. We need that net income to get the correct ending retained earnings. Our beginning retained earnings was 41450 If we throw that number into the ending balance sheet, our balance sheet won't balance. Okay? So I've taken my beginning retained earnings and I've added in my net income to get my ending retained earnings. Had I have had a net loss instead of net income, I would have subtracted that out of retained earnings. I just put my balance sheet numbers in. I remember to subtract out my accumulated depreciation, subtracted that out, zero wages payable, my unearned revenue that I adjusted at the end of the month, and then all the rest of it right there. And our balance sheet always assets equal liabilities and equity if you turn in a balance sheet that doesn't balance it's wrong and then i think did they not know that the balance sheet's supposed to balance or did they just not care and then i have to play some kind of weird mind games and i don't, I don't really like to play that game so even if it's wrong at least make it balance you know uh, that way i know that you know that it's supposed to balance anyway your turn. We got one problem to review rent revenue. Now, uh, unearned rent revenue, I should say. So the revenue in this case that we haven't earned yet is relating to rent uh, in a building uh, where we've taken a tenant's payment up front for multiple months and we have to earn it as we go along. So that's our practice problem in solid footing number 8-1. Uh, we'll have one more video where I walk through the end of the chapter, and we'll have one more problem that goes along with that. So uh, stay tuned for that, and we'll see you next time.